These are dog toes, these are iguana toes, these are my toes, and these are horse toes. And that's whack. On today's episode, horses. They've suffered enough, we should get rid of them. Around 50 million years ago, horses were roughly 15 inches tall, lived in the forest, and had whimsical little four-toed feet. They had it pretty good even if ketamine was still 49,998,000 years away from being synthesized. They were quite agile and filled a successful ecological niche in the forests, which are usually too dense for bigger stuff to find you and eat you while being mostly edible themselves. 10 out of 10 habitat if you ask me. However, 15 million years later, forests started shrinking due to global cooling. And while grasslands did make it easier to forage, it was much harder to hide from predators. So the Euhippus had to evolve some sort of defense. For the horses route, that looked something like this. All those in favor of growing horns or something swag and useful like that say aye. All those opposed say nay. <laughs> Yes, instead of growing a cool horn or evolving a respectable prey animal defense such as camouflage, they did this. <laughs> I will be the impractical sports model of my order. This was the biggest mistake and first step towards their putting all of your points into one step evolutionary one. To survive, the protohorse chose to be fast. Oh. Okay, even faster. And one way to get fast is to not have toes. All those toes just cause your foot to stay on the ground for longer, and when running, that spreads a lot of your momentum to the sides. The toes had to go. Terrible news for a lot of questionable Mary Hippus websites, but awesome news for horse drama enjoyers. But let's fast forward a few million years and see how that went. Good god, they pretty much Chinese foot binded themselves, but also they became bigger. Which makes sense, if you squint. The bigger you are, the longer your stride, and the bigger you are, the better you are at keeping warm. But most importantly, being a coward uses up a lot of energy, and being bigger allows you to eat bigger quantities of nutrient-lacking garbage. Hey! That's right, hey. Bigger horses also got more chick horses because they could mock and overpower the smaller ones they were in competition with. SMH when mares dig you only when you're five foot. But of course the size solution did not fix the main issue. I mean, we're massive now, as well as super fast. Fast burns a lot of calories and our diet pretty much consists of exclusively earth carpet. So how do we burn less calories while running? Hmm, I'm going to stop breathing and see if that works. It actually worked! Ooh, optimization, mm, yes. Horses do not breathe when they run. I mean, they do, but not in the way you think. The horse's gut sloshing around while it runs is what moves its lungs. And here I thought breathing couldn't get any more automatic. And I'm very sorry if saying that made you aware of your own breathing. But this creative problem solving, as you may have guessed, only led to more issues. One of them being excessively sloshy gut syndrome. Yes, horses are very prone to having their intestines tangling as well as hernias. Because the abdominal lining of a horse is actually too flexible for its own good. And here's something I should probably mention at this point. A lot of health issues horses face would not be as bad or life-threatening had it not been for this animal's inability, perhaps even refusal, to heal. I honestly thought having to a horse when it breaks its leg is just a financially practical thing to do. I mean, a third of its leg is a toe, what to even do with that? But that's not it. They're actually too big to support their weight on only three legs. And unfortunately can't lie down for too long either without getting pressure related injuries. The worst part though, horses just don't understand that they have to stay still in order to heal. It is against everything in their nature to be still, thanks to millions of years of trying to perfect being the exact opposite. And you gotta remember, despite their robust appearance, deep down horses still feel like this. They are still prey animals, and there's little evolutionary incentive for prey animals to heal once injured, because getting injured means getting eaten. And so, a fractured hoof, fatal. Inflammation of the hoof, fatal. Abscesses or navicular disease, catastrophic. I actually have no idea why people use the term healthy as a horse. Even at its best, a horse is one weird sound away from a heart attack. It might look majestic, but objectively, the horse is a glorified hamster on hooves. Because horses, on top of everything, have evolutionary adaptive anxiety, which often leads them to their most common cause of death, stress-induced tummy problems, aka gastrointestinal distress. 
Anxiety is as fine survival tactic as any. That's how I personally made it through high school. But horses, as curious as they are, do not adapt well to stress factors. This trait is especially harmful for domestic horses who sometimes just go crazy or shut down, which isn't optimal when they're this fucking huge and this fucking frail. Like, hey, why the long face? Well, my hoof feels a little off and I saw a bird earlier that looked like it was angry at me, so I'm going to die now, I guess. And I get it, I'd be depressed too if some chick puts me in bondage gear and spanks me with some weird stuff while yapping about what a special bond we have. Oh, and God forbid bro wins a contest because his reward would be having to get freaky with the ranch dressing extractor 3000. A medal would have been fine. No, I really don't get why they don't give the horses medals. And I swear the only good thing about the equestrian Olympics events is the fact that the plane they get the horses on is called Air Horse <laughs> One. And that joke isn't worth the suffering these animals go through. Dude, just release them. And stop measuring things using horsepower since we've established that this creature is absolutely powerless. I mean, I like Spirit as much as the next guy, but that horse would not have survived. Are you kidding me? And I don't care how good they are for crowd control society has progressed past the need for horses. This is the type of shit AI was supposed to replace. Enough medical advice and yellow ass anime drawings. Be a horse. 5,000 years of domestication, no benefit. Oh, but the transportation of goods, donkeys. Oh, but the military advantages, cavalry died the day Lieutenant General Ivan Kolev did. Oh no, I'm such a loser. Go watch this video. I'd say the only disadvantages to removing horses from modern society would be the mental deterioration of horse girls who will perhaps turn to an even more unethical or destructive hobby. Oh, and also the sadly already dying tradition of Belgian horse shrimping. You should actually check that one out. And you might think I'm a bit too harsh in this video. Maybe I feel bad for them. Maybe I just don't like animals that look like they're not looking at me, but at the same time are looking at me, but too intensely. Either way, awesome news for people that are so hungry they could eat a you-know-what and glue factories. In other awesome news, gamer subs now come with 33% more tips. Wow. And you can use my code Poopy for 10% off. That's 10% uh, less money you will be paying, not 10% less boobs, by the way. You already know gamer subs have a lot of amazing flavors that are way cheaper per serving than other drinks. And you can yeah. get samples to try them out. But the generous, glorious, divine Vine Subs will give one of you a free shaker and tub bundle so you can get the full experience. All you have to do is be really funny in the comments. Top funniest comments wins the giveaway. Come on, I know you want this. The rest of you need to use my code, Poopy, 10% off. That's the end of the video. Go give me your best, funniest reasons why horses need to leave and never return. Okay, bye.